This is week three, third week of a family, a family project. And if you are visiting this morning, or maybe this is your first Sunday with us through the entire series, let me just remind you of the two things that we have said so far. Here's what you see, what you saw, what you missed maybe on week one. On week one, we basically imply, we basically cover three primary questions that every single human being deals with one way or another. The first one has to do, where do we come from? The second one we explain, what is it that we are? And number three is, where are we going? So, where are we coming from? Or where did we come from? Where are we right now currently? And where are we going? And basically, what we concluded, based on the scriptures, we basically took this whole package of three questions through the filters, through the, through the uh, pattern established in the Bible that we worship one God who is presented in three persons. And because God is a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and He lives in community, the answer to the three questions of who, where is it that we come from, who is it that we are we, and where are we going, is based on the context of this community. We basically established from day one that because He is a triune God, He is a God who lives in community, we were created, and we come from a God that calls us to live in community. We are currently living a life that will not be fulfilled unless you relate to the triune God, but that relationship is reflected on how you deal with others. And finally, here's where you're going. The, the, the bottom line and where this is moving ultimately is fellowship, intimacy with the God of our creation forever, and we obviously call that home. Now, we took on Deuteronomy chapter 6 the whole explanation of the people of God reshaping, retaking, re just, 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 again, tuning in their hearts, the whole process of becoming a family. Week two, we went into the reason why we come from a triune God. What does that imply? How does that look in my context? And what we said last week is that if we are coming, and if we are presently, and if we are heading towards this context of the Trinity, this context of the God who is the community, we understood last week that because of those implications, we understood that we exist to express who God is. So, so here's what I said last week to you, and again, I don't know if you remember this, but this is what I said last week, is that God is a missionary, and that He always models what He expects us to do. And if He's expecting us to live in community, He has modeled that by being a triune God, but this is the crazy thing about God. Being a triune God, He has empowered His church to be the expression of that trinity. So for some crazy reason, we explained last week that when you live a life that is founded and built in the scriptures from age zero, you will build in you the image and the concept of God. And the same thing happens in the opposite direction. If you build a life without the presence of God, still a concept and an image is built into your system of who God is or not. Now, here's why this is important. I don't know if you heard the news. But because of the topic that we're discussing, I have done a lot of research, and I find a lot of articles. And whether you like it or not, these articles are shaping our culture, are shaping where our nation is going. So recently, the governor of New York has, I guess he implemented and he successfully implemented this brand new program where he wants kindergarten to be free to every single child. And they want to begin at an earlier stage for the kids to go to school versus waiting until they go into elementary school so they can begin with preschooling because he wants for, he wants for the children of New York to be exposed to the training, to the teaching, to the, again, to the curriculum, to the system. Which, to my reaction to that was, I'm not opposed, especially when I marry a lady who was trained and loves to work with preschoolers. I'm all for education, but here is the thing that just made me think about it, and I want you to hear this for a second. If you are going to begin to train children until age three or four, wouldn't you agree that it's a little late? Wouldn't you agree that the training begins at age zero? When you're born, when you're born, you're born, and in the moment that you're born, since you were designed for community, you were designed, I 
again, you don't know at age zero, but you were designed to have a relationship with God, that image of God is going to either be present or absent from, from year zero. And, and I'm bringing this up because, again, we have a culture that because we forget these principles, we delegate and we hope that someone else takes on the responsibility. And I am the first one to be grateful for education system. I am the first one to be a person who has invested my life in the education system and I'm going to be gone on the 25th of this month to a foreign country to be a part of an educational system. So I love education, but education systems can never replace what the Bible has given us as a command. So for the last two weeks, that's what we have implemented. Again, the concept of understanding that we were created for a relationship with God, a relationship with one another, and here's the bottom line, and this is what we're going for the next few minutes. The bottom line is this. When we violate and we disregard these principles, by default, the purpose for which we were created becomes, in terms, upside down. Now, last week, I asked you to write down and to develop this, and, and hopefully you guys did, which was the statement that I have made in the past. The family was created with the purpose of dominion under, what's the word? Submission. That's, how, that's the reason why we created. So when you disregard week one and you disregard week two, by default, you're going to find families who are living, turn it around, and you have families who are driven, not by submission. What's the opposite? Entitlement. You have a generation of men and women who they go through life assuming that God, the government, mommy and daddy and brothers and everybody else owes them. And the moment that you go through life thinking that people owe you, then you're going to be, again, taking the God principles and shifting them upside down. And that's implying also that that's why you don't have dominion. That's implying that that's why other things other habits, other individuals, and for some of us it's our past, for some of us it's our fears, they have dominion over us. So this is why you're going to listen to what we're going to say today, because I gave you the two pictures that in my mind are ideal pictures. Answering the questions, where we come from, what is it that we are, and where are we heading to. And then we went into the issue of God being a missionary, we're missionaries, and when you adopt and you embrace who God is, and you go before the Lord and you live out what God calls you to be, you're going to be with the dominion because you're under submission. Now, when those two things are violated, we go to week three. Because week three is the reality of life. I just gave you ideal for two weeks. Now I'm going to give you reals. Ideal pictures versus real pictures. Real pictures means, that, again, we have a generation that more than likely is upside down. So here is how I'm going to ask you to think. If you want week one and week two to really be the core, the center of who you are, and I'm assuming if you're in this place this morning, is you, you want to learn these principles, I'm going to challenge you to think with me of the two most important dates of your life. Now, someone said earlier, it's a quote that I read, so it's not my quote, that the most important date in your life is the day you are born. And the next most important day in your life is when you find out the reason you were born. I'll find the quote. I think it's important. But I'm going to disagree a little bit with that quote. Because I think there are two most important dates in your life. Besides that you were born. So assuming that everybody is in this place, you were born. None of you are unborn people. So I'm glad you're here and I'm glad you're born. But here are the two most important dates that I believe are in your life. The first one is when you receive Jesus. And the second one, if you are married, is when you got married. So in my scenario, my experience with Christ takes me back to 1984. I was 12 years old, and on July 29, I got baptized, making my open, public profession of faith and saying, I am a follower of Jesus of Nazareth. That was important. That was a turning point. Something happened that day that Jesus transformed me. And I hope that you can replace my picture with your picture. I hope that you have in your mind, in your heart, the day when you receive Jesus. Now, the second most important day for me is the day I got married. I was size 30 on my waist. 
So, so part of the question that I'm asking you to wrestle with me right now is the question of how do you find that sense of purpose? This is where I keep on emphasizing the issue of being free from self. Because, <laughs> okay, 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 I, 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 I'm touching on subjects that may be controversial, but uh, I'm just going to say welcome to church. Uh, I believe the best way to get a boy to become a man is getting to get married. Marriage makes you a man. Marriage will force you to think like a man. Marriage will just, just, and I'm not saying that singles are not men. All that I'm saying is this. All that I'm saying is that one of the best ways to get over yourself is to get married. Because you're going to find out that for some crazy idea, you chose exactly the opposite of who you are. You love to get up in the morning, ready to go early in the morning, and she just will not function until 11 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you love to stay up at night and watch the news and, well, Jay Leno used to be, not, not Jay Leno anymore, 